Hey, my name's Hawken, and I'm a relatively new birder. In this episode, I go birding in three different locations over the course of three days in hopes of seeing one of my 10 remaining species in my Birds of Utah field guide. Come along on the journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm really glad you're here. We're gonna get right into the birding adventures. I'm birding along a pond right now and I'm gonna be going along the Jordan River here pretty shortly. So it should be a good day and a good evening of birding. I would be absolutely ecstatic to see a calliope hummingbird. That's one of my birds remaining on my challenge. And it is currently September 18th, which is really late in the season to see them. Most of them have migrated south at this point. I just have my fingers crossed that one's lingering around. The day started with your pretty common species as you'd expect, but then I got my camera out and out in the water I saw a double crested cormorant sitting out on what appears to be a pipe of some sort in the pond. And then we had some pod-billed grebes which are marked as uncommon as I reported them on my eBird checklist, so that was pretty cool. I continued away from the pond though to look along the Jordan River to see if there are any other species and hopefully some hummers. had a dragonfly fly right in front of me. got really excited for a second because I thought it was a Hummer. There was no hummingbirds so far, but the birding was going pretty well up until this point. I was seeing a couple of really cool species, and I came across a sparrow I didn't immediately recognize. The streaking stopping just about at the belly, the eye ring that you can see, the not bold face pattern led me to conclude Vesper Sparrow. It's not a bird I see very often, so it was pretty cool to add to the list for the day. I then came across a flock of birds flying back and forth from this tree above a little marshy area along the trail. Looking closer, they were cedar waxwings, which is super cool. I hadn't seen a flock of them in a long time, probably not since my big day, honestly. And it was nice to see them returning to the area. I repositioned myself to get a better shot of them with the light going directly onto them, and of course, they flew away. I was bummed, but I still took some shots of this house finch. Beautiful group of cedar waxwings. I was gonna pick through them and see if I could find a bohemian waxwing, but they all flew away, as you probably saw. Unfortunately, no hummers seem to be around, though, but we're gonna finish out the rest of this walk and see if we can find any more cool species. The only thing left I had in the day was just a group of European starlings. Although pretty common and maybe birds that people think are trashy, it was fun to see them flying around across the mountains as the sun was setting. But that concludes day one for me, moving on to day two. Hey everyone, we are on day two of looking for this hummingbird. It was actually reported yesterday, the first day I was birding that you saw me. It was reported in the morning though at the Tracy Aviary. Now I'm here at Liberty Park, which is just outside of the Tracy Aviary. The problem was the Calliope hummingbirds, there was multiple, or seen inside the aviary. Now before you get all worked up about me and saying that it needs to be a wild bird for my challenge, yes, these are wild hummingbirds. They still can fly into the aviary from outside. The only issue is the Tracy Aviary is only open from like nine to five currently, and I work full time, so I can't go during the day, so I'm waiting till the weekend, which is kind of far away. I'm still gonna walk around the aviary right now, just around the outside and see if I can spot it from the outside if it's still hanging around. Please cross your fingers for me, let's go take a look. An aviary is essentially a zoo for birds if you are unfamiliar, and the Tracy Aviary is incredible. But if you want to learn more about it, make sure to subscribe because I might have a video coming soon that you'll enjoy. Anyways, I started birding around the area, making sure to stop at the park and take in all of the waterfowl and geese that were swimming along. These birds are so used to people that you can get such close shots of them. And after about a few minutes, the ducks started swimming right up to me. I assume expecting a handout of food, which I did not have. This is 
just from my phone. They're literally right in front of me. Beautiful pond and great stop. If you're looking to improve your wildlife photography, they get so close to you in these parks like this. Great opportunity to get some shots of birds. But that's not what we're here for. We gotta go check out and see if we can see a hummingbird from outside the aviary. So my view from the outside wasn't great. I was basically looking through this fence and looking up at the treetops to see if there were any birds up there. Fortunately, there was not much besides some chickadees and this statue right here. I was gonna go birding in one more spot, but the sun is going down fast. So I'm just gonna do one more lap around and see if I find it. Didn't see it in the first lap. No sign of any hummers. That is the end of day two, sadly. Might get out again tomorrow, probably will go again Saturday. Stick around though, cause I'm gonna probably go birding again tomorrow and maybe again on Saturday. I hope you can hear me with all the cars driving behind me, but it is day three in a row of the birding adventures. I am at the Salt Lake International Center area now, walking around some ponds. There's been some cool warblers spotted here. I figured I probably don't have that much of a chance to see a hummingbird at this point of the year, so I might as well see if I can find some cool warblers. Let's get out there. The Salt Lake International Center is a really interesting area to bird because it's really a business district. You wouldn't expect there to be a ton of wildlife in the area. There's just a lot of buildings around. However, these are the first sets of trees that birds come across as they cross the Great Salt Lake. So it's a good area for migrants moving south to look for areas to stop, have some food and rest. I heard a small peeping noise from the trees in a parking lot right here. I walked over to investigate and quickly got out my camera because there was definitely some birds hopping around the brushes. And this bird you see jumped around the branches was a little hard to get on camera because they wouldn't stop moving. But this is my lifer Townsend's warbler. Then another species showed up too, and I was really eager because there was Nashville and McGillivray's warblers reported in the area, and I really thought this was one of them with the eye ring, but looking back at it, this is just a ruby crowned kinglet. Still a beautiful bird to get onto the list. Surprised with how many warblers are found in just some random trees around here. Like I'm at this business complex area, but every once in a while there's a tree that just has a few warblers in it. Super cool. I picked up my Lifer Townsend's warbler, saw Wilson's warbler, and then I believe I just saw McGillivray's warbler too. That one would not stay still though, so it was hard to get video of. But hey, well never mind a few warblers, that's for sure. Especially a few Lifer warblers. Let's go. As the sun set in this three day birding adventure, I picked up a northern flicker up in the tree and then there were a few grackle on the ground. That's gonna about do it for this adventure and the video overall. I hope you enjoyed coming on this three day back to back to back birding adventures that I've had. Thank you as always for watching my videos and make sure to subscribe because I have a really awesome next video coming up you won't wanna miss.